if you've known me at all personally or watched these videos for the past number of weeks, months, or even years, you know how much I hate generic football phrases usually uttered by commentators like, oh, he plays at such a high level. It's the NFL. It's the highest level of football there is. Or momentum. I don't need to rehash that again. Or downhill runner. Like, oh, he run? he's a downhill runner. Well, the game is played on a flat surface. You know, he runs like he's running downhill. But he's not. He's not. It's flat. It's the same surface for everyone. Or open up the playbook. As if you have to call a certain number of plays or establish the run or something like that before you can call these other plays. Like, no. You could just call them any time. Week-to-week -week league is another one. Like, yeah, I know. It's a week-to-week -week league. That's, it's, there's 18 of them. That's how it's operated. And I guess I know what they mean by that. And it's a hard one to fight this week. That's my point. I, I can't really, it's hard to, one for me to be like, oh, that's stupid. Because the Bills, for three straight weeks, looked like world beaters. They looked awesome. I said it last week. They looked awesome. And they still might be awesome. Doesn't mean you're going to be immune to performances like Sunday against the Jaguars, but they'd won three straight games, each by at least 28 points. And you think, oh, you know, full steam ahead. Jacksonville's just the next team in the way. But man, it's always Jacksonville. It feels like it's always Jacksonville. Last year it was Miami, in Miami, where the Bills rack up all these yards on offense, and for some reason they just can't score. They sustain all these injuries and. We're wondering if that's going to derail their season. It didn't. I suppose it didn't. You know, and I don't think that this this loss to Jacksonville will necessarily do that as well. It certainly damages their um, their opportunity at the you know the one seed. That's, I think that's what we kind of all want. We want the first round bye. We want home playoff games. We want to win the division. But now they're second place in the division. They're a game behind Miami. They're a game behind Kansas City, both of whom they still play. So there's still a lot of time to, to settle this out because it's a week-to-week -week league. The Bills lost in London to the Jaguars, 25-20. They really never got going, never got off the ground, it seemed. And it sounds weird because Josh Allen had 359 yards of passing. He led the league in passing yards on Sunday. But... It just seemed like Jacksonville had you figured out from the get-go. I mean, the Bills punted on their first four possessions. They finally get the touchdown before half. And I'm thinking, okay, sweet, we're going to get the ball to start the second half. And we're going to double dip and we're going to get this figured out. But nope, punt, punt, pick to start the second half. I mean, you have seven points. As you get the ball left with like, like five or eight minutes left in the fourth quarter, you have seven points. It's just an unacceptable performance. And I think despite all the injuries, which we're obviously going to talk about as well, the Bills did a lot of the things that good teams do. They threw for 350 plus yards. They forced two turnovers that took points off the board. They got five sacks. They had two 100 yard receivers. They just didn't win because I don't know. That's, I guess that's how football is sometimes. That's how it was in Miami last year. Maybe it's just always a Florida team. But man, does it always feel like Jacksonville, right? I didn't mean to speed past that point. It always feels like Jacksonville. Two years ago, the Brian Dable led Bills. I mean, McDermott was the coach, but Brian Dable was the offensive coordinator because a lot of people like to throw the, 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 the Dorsey's name under the bus here and just run him over. Brian Dable was the OC in Jacksonville a couple of years ago, and the Bills scored six points and lost nine to six. Who was it? It was it Rick Dennison in the playoff game a couple years before that. 10-3. Like, we just seem to have these clunker performances against Jacksonville. Jacksonville plays us tough. Why? I, I just don't understand where that comes from. And I do think Jacksonville's a team on the rise. I like what they're doing with, I think their receiving core is awesome. I think Trevor Lawrence is awesome. Travis Etienne is awesome. And I think Doug Peterson's the right head coach for that type of team. Um, I just think the Bills should have beat them. And maybe Jacksonville's thinking they should have beat them by more because of the the sack fumbles and such. But I, I reached a point on Sunday where I wondered if the injury bug was going to catch up to the Bills. I made this a point last week. It's funny how that works out. Like last week I was like, credit to McDermott because 
He brings in these injury replacements all the time, and the defense doesn't really seem to miss a beat. We're going to find out. Daquan Jones out maybe for the season. I would suspect, or suspect it's at least, I mean, eight weeks minimum, probably 10, maybe 12. That takes you into January. I don't know, and I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I just saw TJ Watt come back from a torn pack in eight weeks last season, but that's genetic super freak TJ Watt. So it's a little bit different. Matt Milano, we don't know. You know, we know he has a broken leg. Like a broken leg, that feels like an eight-week injury, right? But how much damage did his knee sustain? That sucks. I mean, that just blows. I think there's, you know, if you could talk about, like, the most integral cog of your defense, that is it. You know, a lot of people love the way that Daquan Jones was playing and how Ed Oliver was playing next to him. And I think Ed is still playing at a really high level. Ed is playing outstanding. Will the loss of Daquan Jones matter too much for that? For for his performance? I'm not sure. Uh, I, maybe, you know, you have Puna Ford in the reserves. Maybe that will help the, the, the rotation of Puna Ford, Tim Settle, and, of course, Jordan Phillips. Um, the, but the Milano thing, I mean, they brought in Dorian Williams to try that out, and it didn't go well. Granted, that's a rookie, and it just seemed like he was – even McDermott even admitted it after the game that he was struggling with the tackling aspect of it. And that's where McDermott is just huge. It's amazing how defenses look when they tackle well. If Defenses just look incredible if you don't miss tackles. If your corners are tackling guys on the boundaries, uh, you know, in open space and stuff, you look like such a better defense. You are a better defense because you're not giving up extra yards. And the thing about good offenses, uh, the NFL in general, but especially good offenses, is they will find you if you have a deficiency. And they found Dorian Williams, so much to the fact that the Bills went to Terrell Dodson. And the same could be said for Kair Elam. We all wanted to see him get in the lineup. He got in the lineup. Did it go well? I wouldn't say it went well. You know, Calvin Ridley can do that to pretty much anybody, pretty much on, on any given Sunday. But seven for 122. Of course, the biggest play of them all, they end up with Micah Hyde in, in single coverage as the Bills are sending like this all-out blitz. And Micah Hyde is in single coverage. He's, you know, not your fastest player, of course, with Ridley. And Trevor Lawrence just drops a beautiful ball in there. I mean, first down. The game wasn't over at that point. But Travis Etienne runs for a touchdown a couple plays later. And it's 25-13 and you're essentially buried. Bills did a nice job to give themselves a chance at the end with two really quick deep plays to, to Hardy and Davis, and they had a shot at the onside kick. That bounce was real. Nice job by T-Bass. I don't know if that's luck or whatever, but that bounce was significant, and you know they, they could have had a shot at that, but the onside kick is like the most impossible play in football. So, Like I said, where was I? Oh, the injuries, the injuries and defenses finding your weaknesses. So there's work to be done there. There's certainly work to be done there. Um, no, that's what, this is what coaches do. You have to teach your players how to play your system. Maybe that's why the Bills bring in a guy like Josh Norman to, to help with that transition. Josh Norman, it's weird to me. It's a little weird, the fact that, not the fact so much even that he's like 35 years old, but the fact that he's made like over $70 million in his career and he's willing to come be a practice squad player for fifteen grand a week. Well, to me and you, that's amazing. But to a guy who has $70 million in the bank, I'm not sure what the, the appeal is to come live in Buffalo from October to January. Who am I to say? Maybe, does he love football that much? Sure, maybe. But maybe McDermott really just needs somebody who is on the field, who can be on the field in practice or what have you, or in meetings and stuff to sort of teach Kair Elam to play the system. Again, that's what coaches are supposed to do. But maybe it helps to have somebody who has done it. I don't know. I'm, this is, that's purely speculation on my part. I, ideally, Josh Norman would... I don't even, Is it ideal? I don't know. Do we want Josh Norman to see the field for the Bills? I, I don't know. I, I mean, he was good 10 years ago. 
right? Or, you know, eight years ago, maybe. But like I said, he's, he's 35 years old at this point. Young man's game. Young receiver's game, especially. Um, just sucks they lost that game, man. It just puts such a damper on the day. It's like 1245. You're trying to look forward to football the rest of the day, and your team's already been beat. It's unfortunate. You know, the 930 start, of course, because of London. Let's talk about London. I didn't even get to that yet. I don't love it. I, I, I just... It feels... I've heard this word on, like, the radio and Twitter and stuff. It's experimental. Like, oh, let's... Maybe we can grow the sport over in England. And we could have a team there someday. So let's experiment with every team going there over the next five years. Okay. Like, we're trying to win a Super Bowl here, and you're experimenting with growing your sport. I... I and, and, and you're taking away a home game from us at that. So the Bills, who fly out there on Thursday night, you know, the, I don't know, was that the best idea? I, I don't know. I think they would tell you right now that it's not. But the Bills fly out there on Thursday night. The Jaguars are playing a road game. The Bills fly to London for a home game. Jacksonville's already there for the last 10 days. To play a road game. Sounds like an excuse. I mean, I know how I feel after I travel. You know, that, that feeling can linger. The jet lag, of course. That feeling can linger. I just, I can't, I just can't. You're a professional football team. Like, you can't, like, wake up one day and just be, like, you know, ready to go for three hours or something. Like, or five hours with your warm-up, you know? It just seems like you could be able to maybe suppress the, the fatigue there. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a pro athlete. But I, I do think I'm willing to listen to the fact that that might be a reason. I, I hate that it, like, it just it feels like an excuse. And if Jacksonville had lost, I guarantee somebody – on the Jacksonville side, would be like, well, yeah, man, this is tough. It's tough being out here for two weeks. Like, yeah, we miss being home. I miss my own bed. I miss my family and stuff like that. Like, that's just how, I mean, that's just, those are just the narratives that are just constantly written about these things. So I, I just have to believe that, that would have been a thing. It sucked, though. I'm just, I tweeted, London, never again. And they will inevitably end up there again. It's the second time they played Jacksonville in London. The other, that's right, the other Jacksonville game. Of course, when I was rehashing the it's always Jacksonville thing, the other Jacksonville London game. Unbelievable. From however many years ago. Eight, seven or eight years ago. Rex Ryan was the coach, right? EJ Manuel was the quarterback. Marcus Easley scored a touchdown. Corey Graham had a pick six. Let's not dwell. Let's not, not let one loss become two. Hitting you with a f generic football phrases, left and right. That brings in the Giants on Sunday Night Football. And the Giants are a complete disaster right now. They are 1-4. They've only beat Arizona. They've only put together one good half of football out of 10. Five games, they've been pretty much terrible for nine halves of football. They, they dog walked Arizona in the second half in week two, and they looked outstanding. But again, the caliber of opponent is important. They still haven't scored a touchdown in the first half on offense. Their only offensive touchdown in the first half is a pick six that they just had last week against Miami. The first time they didn't have turnovers on offense was this week against Miami. The first time they forced turnovers on defense was this week, this past week against Miami. They lost by 15. They're out of their, they're, they're I feel bad for Brian Dable. They're, his fate, and likely the fate of GM Joe Shane, who was with the Bills, their, their fate is likely tied to Daniel Jones because, I don't know who's 
fault this is, maybe it's Joe Shane's or, or Dable had some input or whatever, they have hitched their wagon to Daniel Jones. They are paying 40 some odd million dollars to a below average quarterback. A guy who doesn't throw for a lot of touchdowns, who has some escapability with his legs, who essentially is Tyrod Taylor in a way. Maybe with a better arm. I, I don't know. I don't even know that. I don't even know if he's going to play. That's why I mentioned Tyrod Taylor in the first place. I would guess that he will. But man, what if we got Tyrod and Dable on Sunday Night Football in Buffalo? What a full circle moment that would be. And Isaiah Hodgins, of course. How could we forget? And Boogie Basham. But man, the Giants are just, they're like I said, they're a complete disaster. The, other than the Arizona game where they had 439 total yards, their highest yardage output of the season is 268. It was this past week against Miami. That is not, spare me any type of generic football phrase with, oh, maybe that's a building block for them. No, no. they just allowed 524 yards. Their highest, uh, their highest, or their worst defensive output, I guess it would be, of the season. 220 rushing yards, 300 passing yards. I mean, this is, I, I don't even want to say it's like a get-right game for the Bills. This is a, this is just the next team that's on the schedule. You can't do anything this week but dominate Washington. And I think that's what they're going to do. I mean, what do you like? Do you want me to preview this? I mean, they're playing a really bad team at home. They're 14 point favorites. That's probably not enough. Shouldn't be enough. What do you want me to criticize? I, the offense, like the, of, of the Bills, I mean, like uh, the injuries, are they going to play a factor? Maybe, but in the next couple games, Giants, Patriots, Bucks, like, no, you should be comfortably 6-2 and two going into Sunday Night Football again against the Bengals. You want to talk about not using, like, Ken Dorsey and not using Dalton Kincaid and stuff? Like, I admit, it's frustrating to watch a guy like Sam Laporta just seamlessly transition to the NFL and contribute right away. But I can't blame Dorsey necessarily. I don't, I don't, I haven't looked really at all 22s either. I did see one play, I think from cover one, it was like, hey, Dorsey, you're, this is like a 10 yard in for Dalton Kincaid and he's open. But Josh is taking the alpha, the digs, he's, he's going to digs. And maybe that's just the type of player Josh is. That in order to see these tight ends, he needs a broken play. Or them to just kind of run these little drag routes or these, you know, immediate plays of the sideline. Or that's how he's hitting running backs, too. The running backs are basically just, you know, running out into the middle of the field, turning around, and that's how he, that, that's his check down. Because you've tried this. You, you're, trying, you're trying two tight ends with Knox and Kincaid. You're trying... Cook in the passing game. You you were gonna try it with Naheem Hines, but he's hurt. Like it's just that that part of it's not functioning. So does that fall on the offensive coordinator, or is maybe or is Josh Allen just just a receiver driven type of quarterback? Like that's where his mind is. That's how he plays. I I, I I'm again I'm speculating, but I think Dorsey gets a ton of criticism. And I don't know if it's all deserved. That, that's the truth. I don't know. Because I don't know the plays that are called. I've probably said that three, three, at least three times this year. I just don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm picking the Bills, of course, to beat the Giants. And give me the Bills like 41-17. The Bills dominate bad teams. That's what they do. They have done it for the past however many years. So that's that. Josh has 59 wins, and 45 of them or whatever are, are by seven or more points. This is a Josh Allen game. Red on red, uniform, Sunday night football, LED wristbands. Should be sweet. I think it'll look sweet. If you're going to the game, enjoy yourself. If you know where to find me, don't be shy. Say hi. Hit me up on Twitter. My Twitter slash X username is the same thing as my YouTube username. Thank you for coming this far in the video. Enjoy your weekend. As always, above all else,
Go Bills.